So today's talk big, or the second topic for the day is about the Texas governor calls on citizens to report parents of transgender kids for abuse. This new law in particular is making it, so basically it's for medical experts and stuff, that says if they don't report the parents of children who get, are getting gender confirmation treatment, that um, they could be charged criminally for not reporting that treatment. And I think that type of law is immoral. I think the Texas governor is immoral for implementing such law. I think anybody that would report such parents would be immoral. And I also think that parents who do not seek out treatment and care for children who are having issues with their gender identity are actually the ones abusing their children. And it's the other way around. So if anybody wants to come up on stage and talk about that, I appreciate it. Raise your hand and I'll invite you up. Uh, any of the stage managers want to come up or admin, just come on up and uh, I'll let big O. Oh, there you go. Somebody already gave you, let you up. All right. So what do you have to say? I mean, I don't, for just, just for the record, I don't know how long I'll be here. It's almost 1 a.m. But what I did want to say is that if we're talking specifically about Texas, I personally, I mean, I'm like you, I don't agree with it. And I feel like children and people and minds should be able to pick their own path in life. And parents, it's their job to be supportive of that path and to ensure that their child has the best upbringing possible whilst corresponding with their own views and beliefs but i feel like when we're considering local laws as we would consider sharia law or as we would consider uh, a state of christian martial law we do have to remember that texas is a very conservative and christian place and the bible isn't too too keen on people that would be affected by this new law and i feel like when it comes to talking about local law and state law we do have to remember that if we're talking about probably a sizable majority of the population that will be of a christian belief or christian descent we're going to see that as much as we don't like the law it's probably a good idea for public opinion and for keeping people in line, if that makes any sense, because it's going to ensure that the Christian majority is happy, if that makes sense. No, I understand your position on that, I think, but I, I'm not a moral subjectivist, so I don't care what Christians think is moral or not, or what makes them feel happy internally or not. I care about reducing suffering in humans. So I, I do not think that the Texas should be allowed to enforce such law, no matter what the opinions of their populace is. I don't think majority rule is the right way to run any type of government or country um, in, in issues like that. So especially for fundamental rights like freedom of expression, which I think gender identity is one of those um, sincerely held positions and beliefs that people have about themselves. And they should be freely allowed to express their identity, whatever that identity is, especially if it's not harming other people. And preventing people from expressing their identity is causing them suffering. I think even children understand that when you tell them to sh like not talk or whatever, um, that they understand that that um, is something they want to do and they don't want to be told they can't talk. So any responses? Do you have anything to say, Elusive or Boy God, boy God Ideas? Go ahead. Right. Can you oh. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. You're a little <laughs> muffled. If you can get closer to a mic or something. Yeah, I think I'm closer possibly on my head. Yeah, you might want to read test your mic. Your... All right, somebody else can go and let me. Let's let Lisa right. go. Go ahead. Okay. Sure. So I, I just kind of had the question, I, is this just purely based on personal thoughts and, and values? Do they have any sort of medical uh, backing to try and justify this? Or, or is this just 
we we think this should be child abuse, so we're going to say it's child abuse. So I think they think that um, it causes long. Some people believe that um, hormone blockers or what have you could cause long term um, physical harm to children, and um, they should go through puberty. And there might be some indications to that. But the children who are seeking like gender reassignment um, treatment or or not even just gender confirmation treatment, really, when you put give them hormonal blockers, that it produces better outcomes overall for them. They feel more secure in their gender identity when they're able to go through that. So I, I, I don't think the negative consequences um, outweigh the positive outcomes that we have for that. So they do have some issues with like bone density and stuff with um, hormone blockers. Go ahead, Corey. Well, I, I was just going to actually say is like, are, are they okay. trying to, um, I mean, th this just, just sounds like something that it isn't, this, this is a, a medical position. If, if they don't have any like medical basis for this, I don't, I don't understand why they would have any reasoning to try and justify this. Well, I think the, um, the greatest woman, um, brought up a good point. I think it is based on, can you see the ripples up? I think it is based on um, Christianity, like truly held religious beliefs mm -hmm. that people have. Um, if you read the Old Testament, there are passages that say that you can't cross dress and says that you can't remove your testicles or your penis um, and go to heaven. So I think a lot of this is based on that. It's not based on good medical evidence to right. pass Right, and I think that's that absolutely true, but that's not something they can really put into law as far as I'm aware. Uh, can I say something? Yeah. Uh, so basically, I'm not sure the specific age range that, uh, yeah, I'm not sure the specific age range. It just said minors. So I think, but still, it's like kids don't really know what's good for them in their life. So, yeah, but their parents and doctors. Yeah, we're talking about specifically a law that's going to target the doctors themselves for making this diagnosis. Yes. You're, you're yeah. essentially telling doctors how to practice medicine here. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. So basically, what I'm trying to say is children can't really make huge life decisions. And we've sort of gotten to the point in our culture where it's like, when someone transitions, it's like pretty much seen as permanent, which is kind of really bad because there are people who could easily be wrong. And yeah, children don't really know what they're doing with their life. So they should be making stuff that's going to alter it forever. That's why we don't trust children with like driver's license and like a bank account. No, we wait till later in life. No, I do think tra trans youth uh, should get uh, oh, hormone blockers uh, because that, that's easily reversible. But yeah, I think any like hardcore taking hormones and uh, uh, hormones, and, which I don't think children should take that. Yeah, at least not until like. Okay, we can agree. I don't. I don't think anybody on this panel is going to say that. I think kids should be the, the, the person to people to determine whether or not they take hormone blockers, and the only people to take these. Yeah, doctors always are going to be. So, there's always going to be some sort of a, a doctor or a psychologist or a psychiatrist that's going to be a part of the decisions and is going to need to sign off for this to happen. Excuse me. Yeah, go ahead, Ripple. Let's let Ripples talk. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of it is essentially um they want to put things together, so doctors doctors only generally prescribe hormone blockers, but it's beneficial to say, oh, um doctors are going to cut off your child's genitals when they're ten years old. Yeah, I don't think and any it, doctor's doing that, so that that yeah. I know of. Yeah, and the problem like generally it's um Conservatives act like it's really easy to get on hormone treatment, but it's generally much in the opposite way. <laughs> well, I'll take like, that back, doctor. I, I want to, like, hold on a second. I want to take that back. 
So intersex people, doctors will at birth cut off um, intersex people's yeah. genitalia at birth or shortly I mean, afterwards. But like, go ahead, seven. Ripples. I'm, I'm not. I'm not in America, but I'm in the UK, and I'm trans. And I asked for a referral when I was like 16, and I'm 21 now. And you began they, they, at 16. Yeah, and I'm 21 now, and they basically lost quote-unquote, lost all my information so they're going to have to put it through again. So I'm basically going to have to buy hormones off, like, the black market, essentially, and do everything myself. So uh, these laws kind of put trans people in really dangerous situations where they have to choose between mental health and getting, like, uh, basically not being able to do things in a medically safe environment. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, if someone's going to do something that's harmful to them, you want to be able, like, them to do it in, like, safe environments? Yeah, I would say it's actually child abuse to not affirm your child's gender identity. And, and these laws go counter to, I think these laws are child abuse. It prevents children from getting the um, psychological conditions they need. I don't want to say it's a, some type of illness or something, because I don't think it is. I think affirming people's identity is all they need in a way. And that could be through medical care. Like you're should be getting, um, you shouldn't have to go through the back market to get hormones and whatever you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's like that, the thing about that is whatever we think it's funny to like, uh, take a group of people and shun them and, pump them into the back of into like the back well, the back alleyway of society it always ends horribly right do we have any controversy anybody um yeah. anybody in the I'm, audience I'm gonna, say, uh, I'm gonna say why should we be uh affirm affirming people based on just what they say instead of with some objective measurement. Also, is my voice not working? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can hear I know it's, it's coming over pretty echoey. Okay. I don't know if there's like a reverb setting you can turn down, but... Um, it, it, when we talk about reaffirming somebody's gender identity, that's... There is no objective what gender somebody is it's it is entirely like so society may construct the different buckets that we use to describe gender but you you can't just say you're in that one you're in that one everyone picks their own bucket they they decide how they feel about themselves so it's not a personal choice what gender you are uh, it's not a choice it's a belief not not really yeah it's 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 how you feel you don't really choose what how you about say things. What if I say that I'm the flying spaghetti monster? Uh, sure. I mean, I, if society decides to construct that bucket, I guess. Mm -hmm. So um, I want you to worship me as the flying spaghetti monster. Well, I, that's going a little bit beyond how you feel, though, right? Uh, I, I, I say that I feel like the flying spaghetti monster. Sure, that's fine. You can feel like the flying spaghetti monster. Should I affirm your identity as a plain spaghetti monster? I mean... Now, the question I'm starting to ask is, why would I feel like the flying spaghetti monster? Why would you... Uh, why why would you feel like... There has to be some kind of biological basis to how I feel. If I'm saying I feel like the flying spaghetti monster, and the, what I'm trying to make is you can't just have someone say, I'm the flying spaghetti monster, or I'm a certain gender, and that person be that gender. There needs to be some sort of objective measurement. There, there is no objective measurement to gender. Um, Ripples no. asked why they can't, can't hold. Ripples, are you there? Are you able to talk? Um, Ripples, you might have to. There you go. All right. Yeah, if you're if you're saying anything, we we can't hear you at the moment. Hello. Yeah. Hey, there we yeah. go. Hello. And like, like, well, it's, it's 
gender's really complicated and it requires a lot of looking into. It's not just what you think, it's we have like both biological um things, biological fuckery, which I'm not qualified to explain. <laughs> and then we also have like how society works. It's not like so it's not just whatever you think. It's a very complicated like form of bashing people's about until they form and fall into something, I guess. And gender is very we have social constructs for gender. We don't have a social construct for a flying spaghetti monster, but yeah. I mean you could believe you're the flying spaghetti spaghetti monster, but I wouldn't know how to deal with you and I I mean I wouldn't go out of my way to abuse your firmly held belief, but um I don't think I could interact with you because I don't have a social framework to interact with the flying spaghetti monster. And and to be honest, it's sort of a slippery slope argument. We are discussing gender identity and, and identity. Yeah, I mean, it could be like racial identities, ethnic identities that people have. I think there's some validity for people identifying with a group that they, they really have a firmly held belief. And we can see examples of that in society. But those are actual real so social constructs that we have in society and trying to turn it to some other type of construct that, that no one that we don't have anything for is is a slippery well, slope argument. Sorry. Well, the point I was trying to make is you can't just say, oh, I identify as this and be and be the thing that you identify as. There is a there is like an objective standard of measurement that we use to go about identifying things. Like, I don't uh, agree. Go ahead, Ripples. Uh, yeah, like yeah. Ob obviously, there is a group of what you would call objectively trans people. But the thing is, it's like mental illnesses. Um, if you if like so someone if someone thinks they have an illness, it's better to like give them medical treatment rather than deny it. And, <laughs> then, like, are you talking? Sorry. Well, you could say someone like someone's only trans if they have dysphoria. Um, it's quite complicated to understand what dysphoria is or like how it manifests. So, if we like say, oh, trans, like you need transphoria, tra dysphoria, which is obviously like, um, you end up blocking out people who are actually trans and just don't understand how they're feeling properly. So, like, while I do, I do agree that like. Being trans isn't just, oh, I'm trans, I'm trans now, like, just saying it, but, like, it's safer to act that way and, like, look out for people rather than mm -hmm. um, gatekeeping people who want, like, like the scary, you know, not the people who want trans, for, like, for very little gain. Yeah, yeah I just, I just want to, sorry. yeah, you I just want to say... Yeah. Yeah, so this this argument came up with the gay thing that there was a gay gene and that people somehow it was wrong to choose to be gay or that gay was some type of mental disorder. And I just want to push back and say, if it is the case that people are choosing to have a belief, which I do not agree, and their in their belief is that they are the gender opposite from what they were assigned for, I don't see how that choice is invalid that, that we shouldn't affirm that mm -hmm. affirm that choice because it is a a normal social construct they're not asking you to do anything else so i don't believe it is a choice i don't believe beliefs are choices i believe you're convinced that that is the case you're convinced that you are male you are convinced that you are female it would take world shocking revelation of some time to change that firmly held belief that you have. So it's not it's not just people choosing, but even if people were choosing, how could you write laws to prevent people from expressing their choices about what their identity and their gender is? Because it contradicts reality. Well, not really from laws, but you can't, if it's like, if we can't objectively measure this, then how then there literally is no reason like that's the thing it's like beliefs can be wrong like you can't just believe something for it to be true 
I, there are people that believe Christianity, and you certainly don't believe in Christianity, Ocean, Ocean. I, I, I think we're trying to get into some, some very different things. Like, I can believe that Christianity is true and be wrong. I can also mm -hmm. believe that I'm thinking of the number 10. There's no way you can show me that's wrong. Well, if you believe you're thinking about the number 10, then you kind of are thinking about the number 10. Exactly. Yeah. So if, if I think if somebody thinks that they are um, that, that they don't really identify with this this societal construct of what a, a, a man is or what a woman is, they just don't. It just becomes tautologically true. Okay, that's interesting. So basically, you're saying that if I think I am, because that actually is something. Yes, I am. I do think I am. I I think yeah, I am kind of struggling with my gender identity. So if anybody in the chat here thinks I'm a transphobe, no, I'm. I use. I held the position that uh, trans people are valid because. Uh, MRI scans, but that was uh, debunked. So I'm sort of in this position now where it's like, well, uh, I am feeling, oh, wow, I do have some aspects that women normally do, and I have some aspects men normally do. However, you can't just identify as something and have it be true. Well, so let's, ask, let's ask Ripples. Ripples, is your gender identity true to you? Yes, um, I would say like it's. I don't know how to explain it. I'd have to like, <sighs> but yeah, I I I don't agree with like. I think biological essentialism is generally just bullshit and misogynistic. Like how? the whole um oh um, women's like people like they say really dumb shit to like make trans biological essentialism real when they're like oh, like the whole brain thing. People are like uh, women's brains smaller. Uh, some trans people's brains smaller. Therefore, trans people have women brains, <laughs> like, which is like an misogynistic. That's, that's no. Uh, we can't. We don't really measure intelligence, and you also sort of just called me a scientist. Uh, I no. just immediately thought of the scientist article on Conservapedia. I, yeah, I'm I just don't, like, sorry. Where it's like, oh, well, oh, you think the science is full. You're basically, basically on conservative There's this science, science, I don't, it's scientism is the name of the article and basically talks about scientism is the belief that the scientific method can be applied to seek truth. And it's, it's it can be applied to virtually everything and I'm like. I don't, and then you which... bio, I don't think that's what. I don't think that's what. What's your gender identity, Ripples? Like um, just uh, pronouns. She had woman pronoun. Woman pronoun. Okay, okay so, so I don't think she is saying that. So go ahead, Elizabeth. No, I was saying that like I was saying that like um I don't I was saying that I don't like biological essentialism when trans people say oh uh, trans people are right but like when they use. They use basically really like shoddy arguments to say like there's a woman brain, like a female brain and a male brain, which Whoa. I think is just very shoddily um, hidden the f misogyny. Yeah, but I think it's more to do with like um, how societal relations work to gender. Um. It's yeah, and more so than and more so than like biologically, because I don't think there's really a huge difference between. Yeah. Yeah, I want to uh, bring up comment to what well, Gabby's cool. comment is. Can you hold on a sec, Corey? Uh, sure. So just to because Gabby's been talking about um, maybe some of us are confusing gender roles or or stereotypes belonging to a specific gender created by society. Whereas gender is a relationship with your sex, physical body. And I, I want to point out that you can be a trans woman and you can play the, a male, like have a 
have male role characteristics within society that it's not just a specific binary thing. You could be uh, like a femboy or 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 a tom, whatever it is, right? Um, you can have the you can be identify as a woman and and have a role that's male and still identify as a woman. So just to make sure we're clear on that, so. Did, did I get that right, Ripples, you think? Or what, what did I yeah. mess yeah. up? Right, yeah. I was, yeah. Like, being trans is weird, and it's it's not as simple mm -hmm. as some people think it is. It's a lot of different conditions affecting you, or, and yeah. Yeah, so, and Polish Yoshi asked a question. Yeah, why? Sorry. Um, why should majority of society comply to needs of non-binary minority, even though it's not simple to implement that? And so my response, um, what, what's your response? It, it, it is easy to implement that. Yeah, I, I'd ask why, what, what is the complicated process of this? It, especially if we're, like, in terms of pronouns, this becomes generally pretty simple. If you start getting into, like, some neo-pronouns, there's going to be a little bit more pushback, but yeah. But like we use we use they them and we've we've used they them for lots of a long time anyway. <laughs> right. So it's I, not. I, I struggle using they am to um, discuss anything that's not plural based on the language I learned, but um, yeah. I try to anyways. Uh, you know, I'll I'll bet you you do and you just don't think about it. Yeah. Like if you, I, like, yeah. You, you probably do it all the time. There's there's certain there's certain parts of of the English language where we just naturally do it. It's it's not uh, weird. Yeah, I try like, not. To, I mean, it's hard for me to. Yeah, but I was a, probably abused by my teachers to not do it. That that's where I'm coming at. From yeah. It, so some some English people, some English teachers, so, some like big. Fancy English people are very like hard on how you use the language. They're like, oh, it, yeah, which sucks. It should be a little I, more fluid. I'd say that this is the reason why you can't just say, oh, well, I'm this thing, and then boom, you're that thing. That's not how the world works. And then it like that expects society to comply with what you think and what you can't. Uh, demonstrate i mean at this rate it's just like an undemonstrated claim can you change your name Maybe. i'm sorry i didn't i didn't catch that can you oh, change sorry. your actual can you can you identify yourself with another name is what he's asking yeah like a, a nickname uh, can you can you just say you know what my name is is tom but every time you meet somebody you say i really want you to refer to me as rick should should people refer to you as Rick? Should they just? Well, I'm talking about like general society, not just like name change. If somebody uses different name and pronouns, that doesn't really affect anything. However, you should, at that way you shouldn't be giving people slack if they don't. And then, uh, yeah, and they, you should. They, basically, I'm just like kind of in, well. I'm sorry, my train of thoughts just like shattered well i mean there's you can actually see this a lot if, if there's there's some kids that just absolutely hate their names they take nicknames they they, they like, like those names and they just absolutely hate when everybody calls them their their legal name so yeah. i i think in instances like that i think it can be very rude to explicitly and only call them by their their legal name sometimes yeah but then it's like the thing is that it's like society has to deal with that so if i so then uh, pe these pe people are asking, oh, we need a gender neutral uh, changing rooms and restrooms. We need to use gender neutral language when addressing uh, crowds of not like form. I'm talking about like formally and like all this stuff. I mean, if it's just, oh, I believe this and I can't show any evidence, then the whole thing with civil rights just falls apart. I don't think it falls apart. I, I think we're able to handle it just fine. I, I think if we treat everybody as an individual, then 
that's what civil rights is about. Like, and, and just yeah, to point out, so, school would disagree with that. But okay. Yeah, and just to push back with Polish, also the reason why we would want to affirm identity is it reduces suffering of people that because, um, like um, Elusa pointed out, if somebody wants to go by a specific name and you continue to recall them some racial slur or something it can cause suffering in, in that person and imagine if you truly believed you were a different gender and somebody was misidentifying you purposefully as another gender that that can cause them suffering so there's reasons to affirm people's gendering if you want to be a moral agent in the world well the thing is is it's like person that identifies with a different gender and says, okay, I guess I'm a different gender to everybody else. Then they take uh, hormones and stuff. And then, uh-oh, I was wrong because I said I was trans at the age of uh, eight, and now uh, people don't Let's really try this again. Do you guys hear me? Much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think oh. many people are are going back to the uh, another gender. And hormone blockers help yeah. to yeah. Uh, allow children to realize if they're wrong or not mm -hmm. about that. And, but and even going a little deeper into that, sorry, I just want to get this out really quick. Uh -huh. um, I, uh, from what I remember reading for some of these studies, that people who do end up regretting any any of these changes, it tends to be because they just nobody's accepting them, and life's just harder because. Society is just acting there. They're they're uh, it's not really supporting them. People people who have very supportive uh, family and and friends tend to have pretty good outcomes for this. Just also, to touch on the um, just to touch on the uh, like gender neutral bathroom thing really quick. Um, I think that that is like one of the easiest like things to fix because you already have like i live in la and like, like there are already lots of places with like gender neutral bathrooms and whatnot um and then also like you've got a lot of republicans talking about you know like oh like what if like like a like a dude like wearing like a like a woman's suit like comes in the like woman's bathroom and like like you know sexually assaults a woman and like this would solve that issue too because the gender neutral bathrooms could just be like you know um like single like single like unit like locked gender neutral bathrooms right well i mean if if is that really going to stop them though um, like if, if they're well oh, oh no i'm not allowed in that bathroom yeah. i guess i won't sexually assault no, no, someone no, you're, you're not you're not yeah. you're not listening so like yeah. the idea is that the gender neutral bathrooms would be like single stall locked bathrooms instead of like a public like men's and women's right so they well, like literally couldn't get in physically and it would also be gender neutral no i'm, most, I'm, I'm just most, I'm... Is, most establishments already have gender neutral bathrooms they always have had gender neutral bathrooms every home is it has gen i don't know i don't personally know of any homes that has a men's bathroom and a woman's bathroom i i don't know like most restaurants like small restaurants they have one toilet and one sink and one whatever and they, everybody shares it they lock the door when they go in if they want to if, if they're that afraid of somebody walking in the, these ideas that somebody's going to walk into the bathroom and assault somebody like how often has that ever happened in the history of the world it's probably in the i mean billions of people it's probably in the hundreds it's not often I, I was just trying to throw out there like even if you have this scenario where you are having a like an an eight stall bathroom that that anybody can go in and use i don't i don't think just the social convention of well i guess i'm not supposed to be here is going to stop somebody who's already made up their mind mm -hmm. to rape somebody yeah. also um we like, in, like can i can i also bring up that it's also a massive fallacy to present that um the whole sexual assault or, yeah, or, 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 or sexual harassment stick that, that might occur right. if uh, a transgender is going to the bathroom. That's, that's, that's a fallacy in and itself. A vast majority of uh, trans men and women who are, who are um, struggling with their identity aren't looking to go into, um, into a bathroom just to find a child in there and, you know. Um, excuse me, can I yeah, that, Sure, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, but like also we can see how it's like very hypocritical um 
So uh, a few years back, um, he was called. I think it was called Brock Turner. Brock Turner. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he, yeah. He, I, he, you're he, talking he, about the the college rape. Yeah, he raped mm, someone behind the dumpster, and uh, the judge let him off because he was uh, with six months because he was a good basketball player. Oh, I think I heard about this. I'll but post like, the link to it. Like um, like there's such a small chance of like the the if 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 if, if like rape is going to happen with a trans person. The trans person is most generally going to be the victim here. Like, right. look, average. Yeah. Well, there's even laws that allow you to reduce your criminal penalty in some states in the U.S. if the person you murder is trans because it's trans scare yeah. laws, and it doesn't get you off from the crime, but you you get it reduced from murder to like manslaughter. It, it's it's no yeah, point. yeah, That's trans crazy. scare laws. Yeah. I just want to get us back on topic. So yeah, like bad. in the in Texas, which is like I think the second or third most populous state in the United States, they're they're passing a law. They 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 make it a law where if you know that doctors or nurses are providing care to children for gender confirmation treatment that you and you don't report that you can be um, charged criminally for not reporting child abuse. So that that's really what the topic was about, and I'm happy to discuss the other related trans issues. But how can you, how can anybody, can anybody present an argument to support them passing such a law? I think, I think if you uh, I, I, I had a question really quick about it, but... Huh? Yeah, I, I had a, I, so so when they so when they when they when they ask you to like take note of it, like what does it just go on a list or like why do they have you why do they have you like check in with them like why, like why do they have you report it? They consider it child abuse, and if you don't report child child abuse, it could be a crime. Oh, so, okay, okay. I see. I'm. This is making sense now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really have anything to slam, um, or I don't. I don't really have anything to support that law per se. But I'll go. I'll go tooth and nail to slam a law like that. Um, to be honest with you, but um, you would have to show how the child abuse. Yeah. If any, if anything, I would argue that it's probably child abuse to neglect. Uh, to neglect a, a child's. Um, you know how their their identity you know what it is that they that they may be struggling with and to just push it aside as a phase which is something that happens in the vast majority of occasions especially in conservative states such as texas um i think it's very neglectful to to put a child through uh through something like that and make it seem as though that their their um what they might identify as is completely invalid and it's just completely null and void and just overall neglect the child. I don't think that that's, that's uh, the proper way to go about it. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's like, okay, like, you know, like, is, does it does it help children? Like, when we look at the data, it seems as though that is the case. So, everybody else should shut the fuck up. <laughs> what, that putting, that, that reporting this particular thing no, about no. abuse helps a child? No, no, that, that helping them go through gender affirming like uh therapy helps them i think you should report oh, yeah. parents who don't seek out medical treatment for children that have struggle with their gender identity and those are I the agree. parents that should be reported for child abuse it's ass I'm backwards say, i'm gonna say that uh, uh oh come on i lost my train of thought uh yeah, I sort of wish we had somebody on that actually could give me an argument for why. I mean, I think I sort of understand because what the position is. Uh, because uh, a 
we shouldn't be uh, supporting the idea that uh, a monster lives under a child's bed. Well, that's just an, an analogy. Or it's like if a slippery slope. Say, we're we're not talking child. about yeah. We're not talking about non-social co constructed identities. We're not talking about affirming that the monster in the bed under the bed is real. We're talking about confirming people's physical identity, how, what they identify as. So it, to to bring up other things is a slippery slope or red. So I, I I mean I, I understand what he's talking about. Like if we if we are no. saying if you're if you are arguing that they're these kids are just wrong and that they're um that medicine, modern medicine is also wrong in saying that we should treat them in a certain way. You have the argument there that, um, that you, you, you might not want to be, be pursuing this kind of, uh, treatment, but I don't think it's a very good argument. Um, so I, I, I think it's a valid question to ask. It's just, uh, it's, it's going to be really hard to, like, basically the argument is well, not bad. Hey, did you have rip ripples? Welcome back to the stage. Do you have any comments to make? Um, no, my 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 mic's just really my 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 phone just keeps cutting out. <laughs> yeah, people have trouble with that on these open stages where their mic just ends up stopping they have to leave and come back i'm not sure why that is must be new discord's new uh community guidelines getting ready to sh shove everybody in line well i'm happy that no one actually supports this type of law that's really where my issue is is with this law but we can move on to other transgender issues if you want to. Well, basically, my idea, well, I don't even know what my position is anymore. I'm just sort of going along with what I'm currently thinking of. Uh, that's also can, can I but give anyway. you some advice, Corey? So, mm -hmm. so here, here's my advice. Stop looking for um, some type of physical proof or, or evidence that you what your gender is like go if you have a feeling that your gender is not what you were that you're told it is that you should like yeah. maybe go talk to a psychiatrist or something or psychologist uh, and and figure that out don't look for some mri brain scan don't look for some medical test to prove it it is a psychological belief that people have um, about their gender I have a question. Mm -hmm. Um, so growing up, I grew up religious. I'm I'm not exactly religious, uh, per se, but from what I from what I was taught growing up, uh, there were a couple of scenarios, and I can actually link these if you would like, um, where there were there were trans there, there was a trans man who actually transitioned back to uh her original gender to because because um she found god and you know they she 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 said that you know this was a mistake or whatever the case may be and i i don't and um i'm glad i was able to to reverse it before it got worse or whatever the case may be so like um now, although as a rationalist myself, I can't definitively say that, you know, she that, you know, she was she just up and decided I'm just going to, you know, detransition or whatever the case may be. I still pose the question of what was going on with her mentally for her to feel like she had to detransition or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? Um, that part had me a bit curious. All Right Sorry, boy, got ideas. You're, you're not coming through. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I would say with childish, my response would be that your belief system can change when you're convinced um, that it should change in some way. Like, um, 
And I, I think it's hard to understand how somebody's gender identity could change. But if they found God, they had some, tra not traumatic is the wrong word. They, they had some um, special evidence that convinced them that the religion was true. And I think that's hard to change too. So, and that mm -hmm. fundamental mm -hmm. change mm -hmm. in their belief system would be a reason for why possibly their gender um, identity fundamentally changed too. I think it's sort of complicated with identity and um, truly held beliefs. Yeah, and I can put, I can, I can understand that. Um, my thing is, is you know how to, how to, how to us as a society respond to such a scenario because i understand that this is a unlikely scenario to occur but it's still a scenario that has already happened um multiple times over you know what i'm saying so i'm i'm, I'm just trying to figure out like as society do we do we support this person either way with the decision that they make or do we tell them like, no, you should have stayed trans because that was your true identity. You embrace that identity. Like, how how do we go? How do we go about this? Uh, like, not um, we should just like support people in whatever decision they make. If they want to like go back, then that's cool. But if they want to stay as trans, that's also cool. But this is where I kind of lean towards like sort of like gender abolitionism because I think whole concept of gender kind of fucks everything up, you know, where people are sort of like, I think uh, OG touched on this like before, it's like people are like taught that they are even, you know, men and women in the first place, you know. Uh, so I think that, you know, I don't know. It's probably some type of societal pressure that leading that person to detransition, you know, that's what I'm trying to say. So is there such thing as societal pressure to, you know, make somebody transition per se? Is that a possibility? I would I would say there's more societal pressure in the other direction. It could be the case that somebody like based on the, yeah based on the belief systems they're surrounded by, so it can influence their truly held beliefs. I mean, it will influence it, but I I think it's a big stretch to say that just that social pressure is what convinced them that their identity was different. I think they probably no, were would, predisposed to that, that anyways. Yeah, I would never say that. I think that it's a whole bunch of factors that, you know, as we, we're still probably trying to figure out, you know, what things determine that, you know, that your identity. And, and I found a study that says there's an 80% desistance. I guess that's a um, where people have no problem with their gender. Um, I think that's what it means. But I posted that study on it. There's a note in here somewhere about 97% of um, transgender people are happy with their outcomes um, from that. Yeah. So. That's good. Yeah. So it's good. It's, it's, it, it's positive outcomes. It may be a minority of people in society, but I think that us supporting positions like this for people like this have ramifications in other issues in society too, right? It's about accepting um, everybody for their unique um, characters that they are and not trying to shame them or humiliate them or what have you for their identity. And maybe accept if they're a Nazi or something. I, I maybe, maybe I'm a little bit of a hypocrite there. So um, I know this is aside from the uh sexist law but um did you guys cover the don't say gay bill already no we can bring it up though i'm, I'm interested with that oh i heard about that where's that yeah happening? yeah so that's happened that's happening in florida with um ron DeSantis. I'm sure you heard of him but um the uh so pretty much um pretty much what it dumbs down to correct anybody correct me if i'm wrong um but what pretty much what is going on with that with that whole stick is that um there's an issue that is being presented if you are working in the school place and you present to a child um anything that correlates with lgbtq whatsoever right so let's say let's pose the example of um 
let's say that a teacher uh, made a worksheet, made a class worksheet for the whole class to go through. Um, if that if that worksheet somehow poses that I don't know, Sally had two fathers or whatever the case may be, that will that by that according to the bill would perpetuate something, and then by that metric that uh, that teacher would be would would basically be fired for bringing something simple as that up and it more so covers uh i guess parental rights in teaching their kids about um homosexuality about about a uh, transgenderism or whatever the case may be and um the whole conspiracy theory that um parents should have the right to to make the decision of teaching their kids you know about these particular things because those minds aren't ready to to know about those particular things, which I which I believe is completely false. But yeah, that's pretty much the whole TLDR on that yep. whole situation. I posted a link to it in the chat too, if people want to read about it. Um, Lena is up on stage. Do you have anything to add to the discussion, Lena, about this gay bill or the trans uh, law? Basically, let's say that you're on an island, okay? You crash land on an island, and you're really hungry, all right? And there's another guy who has all the coconuts, and he says he's willing... Okay. <laughs> all right, Come I on, this isn't a... I, I couldn't resist. Okay, look. Um, I think the bill is incredibly fucking oppressive. Um, I think it has no right to exist, and let's just be frank, it is the... I don't want to say the uh, death kneel per se, because uh, conservatism and all that like really shitty nationalist stuff hasn't been snuffed out yet, unfortunately. But like being a minority is something that the right has always tried to criminalize. They've done it historically with things like the war on drugs, and they've tried to criminalize like disagreement with the fucking death cult of conservatism. Um, especially when they tried to criminalize like anti-war stuff during Vietnam and shit through the Nixon administration. Yeah. Um, yeah, this bill is not meant to help kids. Um, if it were, you would see more like complete support from the right for like social programs for kids in broken homes or in abusive homes and all that. Um, but it, it's very strange to me seeing people like Greg Abbott and like Matt Gates and all that shit talk about um, in prior examples when it comes to like. Well, not just that, but also expanding, like, the government's ability to determine cases of uh, domestic abuse in the household from a parent towards a child. Uh, and they're like, oh, we can't have the government telling our kids how they can be raised, you know. Uh, uh, the, the, the parents have to have the final say here. And then they go and they fucking draft up and support bills like this, which literally criminalize the act of having a child who uh, dares to question gay. their identity. Yeah. It, it, it's utterly fucking ridiculous. Like, I hate these goddamn ghouls with a passion because they will go up in front of millions of fucking Americans, hundreds of millions, may I add, and just fucking lie through their teeth. And it boggles my mind that this isn't an insult to anybody who disagrees with my position, but it boggles my fucking mind that anybody can look at these bills and say, you know what? Yeah, this is protecting the children. That's what the, that's what we need. We need the government to step in, and we need to make sure that these kids who dare question their identities are outed. Because God forbid that a kid thinks about what they want to do. If they think about what they want to do in life, that's okay. If they think about their hobbies or how they want to dress fashion-wise, of course, as long as it conforms to gender norms, that's okay, too. But God fucking forbid they think about what pronouns they want to use, and they think about what uh, name they want to use. So, no, uh, yeah. heated right. My apologies. It, yeah, this fucking... Okay. This law actually is child abuse. This is abusing children. This is the exact yes. opposite of yeah. pretty good children good. This is child abuse. <laughs> Greg Abbott should be in jail for laws like this. And anybody that reported parents for getting their kids gender affirmation therapy, what, I can't even say the words, those people should be criminalized. I'm telling you, if I had a gun and, like, fucking 20 bullets and I was in a room with Greg Abbott... Uh, yeah. You wouldn't shoot, shoot him because you're not a criminal. Yeah, yeah, We're not going to yeah. say that. I, I got to drown you let's out. Say, let's say I have a paintball gun, okay? And he has okay. a really nice suit, and he has a dinner party in 30 minutes. 
<laughs> okay, but for real, fuck Greg Abbott, all right? I, I, I want to suplex that fucking guy so bad. Holy shit. God damn. Yeah, it's I wouldn't, just I wouldn't, I wouldn't make, I wouldn't, uh, put, make it that, put it that far, you know? Um, I got, I got, uh, my own, um, heat with Matt, with, uh, with, with, uh, Matt Gates, um, Ron DeSantis and all those other folks. Um, but my thing is, is that when, when it comes to politics, when it comes to policies, especially like this, uh, there are always going to be um, particular particular issues that are going to be made as if it is a terrible thing. And that is something that both the left and the right in politics do on a consistent basis. And I can't say that I'm surprised that you have uh, politicians that support um, BS like this. You know what I'm saying? Um but at the end of the day, this is the reality, and I would I would pose as I would I would pose for you know for Americans alike to be able to you know speak out against these particular issues and not be afraid to call out their senators for for posing ridiculous shit like this. You know, um, that's that's my overall position. Uh, but um, to my knowledge, if I'm not mistaken, this bill is bound to pass, though. Believe it or not. Uh, I hate that you're right, man. This I'm going to post the this numbers. Bill is definitely going to pass. I'm going to post the information for the Texas governor's office in the chat. If anybody's interested in discussing it with them, they can do so. I actually made a video about this. It sort of pissed me off so much. I had to say something. But um, anyways, there you go. And just a reminder, the YouTube channel, Modern Day Debates, is having a this, um, debate on legalization of pot. So if you want to watch that, that's actually happening in about 30 minutes. And we'll be closing this channel up here in a few minutes. So if anybody has any last comments to make, feel free to do so. We hop on over there to the, to the channel to like see a post in the comment section before it starts. Yeah, I'm sorry, boy. Got ideas I cannot understand you, and don't even try again. It's too hard. <laughs> Anybody else? All I'm saying is, I don't understand that either. <laughs> I, I, had, I had my hand over the mic. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, a little bit better. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry yeah. for poking fun of you, man. I, whatever. <laughs> So I, yeah. I would just say I'll probably go over to the five seconds to get me open the comment section before the debate. Yeah, it didn't work for you at all. Do you Sorry. Have, okay? Do you have noise suppression enabled on Discord? Me? Yeah, might and it's just really strong. Yeah, uh, look in open stage chat. Click on that little like. Uh, thingy with a fucking slash in it if you're on desktop and uh, turn that off if you can. I think that might make you audible, assuming it's off well, or on. Yeah, I'm actually going to just move you to the audience. I think you were going to go watch the Modern Day Debate YouTube, uh, but yeah, maybe next time you'll... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'll just... There you go. All right. Well, you left. I didn't mean for him to leave. Anybody else well, have any closing no. remarks to make? I basically say my my position is basically uh, do uh, do whatever you want. Uh, well, do do whatever you want if you think that's what you are, even though you aren't. However, nobody should be forcing kids to do anything. We shouldn't surely shouldn't be like oppressing children for just simply asking questions. If anything, we should keep. I mean, I guess just, I don't know. And then, but adults can do whatever they want. Just don't expect society to, don't expect everybody to like comply with what you want. Uh, and yeah, I, I think it's just, I, I, I'm gonna 
I'm going to go. It, this is a fun stage. Thank you, Lucia. Thanks, Corey. Anybody, you have any closing remarks, Elusive or Lena? Uh, no, I, I, I think um, we've, we've gotten most of it. Yeah. I should be the female Alex Jones. That's what I need to, that's how we need to fix politics these days. I need to like get on mic and just scream with my shirt off. I think, I think I will really fix what's going on in the world. You, you could be the asshole to my nice guy on a, a talk thing on YouTube if you want to. <laughs> I, I think that like, fuck man. It, I, I, I feel like I may have missed a lot of like good shit earlier, but like, God, the the fact that there are just fucking ghouls, and and that's what these people are—they're fucking ghouls. I I legit cannot tell with the state of U.S. politics if these people even believe in this shit or if they're just being paid to believe in it by somebody. Because like, fuck, have you guys seen what happens at like right to repair hearings and shit? Like, it's it's literally people on one side who are like tech stores, and they're like, hey, you know, we have the means to repair this, and we think. The consumer should have the right to repair it. All the counter arguments oh. in favor of companies come from people like literally paid to just oppose the talking points and shit. And I can't help but wonder, like they they debate it with the same ferocity and conviction that uh like these anti trans bills do. So it just makes me genuinely wonder, like, are these people just pieces of shit, or are they just fucking paid to be pieces of shit? Because either way, like, fuck, dude. Okay, that demonetized my channel. Uh, so, oh god, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Ah! That's <laughs> okay. I mean, shit. I, I, <laughs> god damn it, sailor mouth. Ah. Yeah, I was a sailor. Um, so we're going to close it out unless somebody really has something they want to say that's in the audience. They can raise their hand in the next couple seconds, and I'll let you up on stage. And doesn't look like anybody wants to come up on stage, so. I just want to remind everybody to check out the debates on Modern Day Debate Discord. I have my own YouTube channel. If you want to check out my videos, I basically um, don't hate religion, but I, I have some disdain for religion. I, I might express that a little bit on my channel. And uh, next Saturday, we're going to have a topic. I, I rescheduled the free markets versus socialism topic to next Saturday, and I hope you all show up. Thank you very much. I'm going to end the recording now. Thank you.